live-ish from Hickory. It's Tuesday night, May 7th, and you're about to watch an all-new Carolina Reaper show. Real quick, let me, get, let me tell you about Hendrick Honda Hickory. Are you in the market for a new vehicle? How about a used vehicle? Go down to Hendrick Honda Hickory and they'll hook you up with a Honda hot dog. <sighs> All right, we got a lot of show to do. Um, I say we get to it. What do you say, boys? Let's, Let's do, it. do it. The Alan Jackson, please. Thank you, thank you. What up, peeps? Welcome to. I'm laughing because they hit the wrong button. I was supposed to hit this one. I said I hit the last one. Anyway, welcome to Carolina Reaper Show. It's like a PM magazine from the Carolinas on the crack coin. In today's episode, it's going to be a little cringy and a little lip smacking. Comedian Chris Munch will be zooming into the show, or is it Steven Stevens? Stick around to find out. Also, I got more residual checks. Look at here, look at all these residual checks. Somebody is gonna win my money or a prize, whatever they want, in this episode. Who will it be? Who is it? How much? I don't know. Uh, and what else? Oh, we got, we're gonna get another history lesson from my young Hayseed Gen Z, intern Isaiah. But first, I want to tell you right now, I'm live right now on Facebook, YouTube, X, and Twitch, live in the comment section. That's right. So I recorded this yesterday and we're putting it out tonight so that I could be down here in the comments with you. I'm watching, I'm hanging out with you watching me. Does that make any sense? I want to be interactive with you. Leave me a comment. I'll ask you a question. How was your Cinco de Mayo? Did you do anything fun? Huh? Leave in the comments section. Let me go to my interns over here. What? what? Isaiah, what, are you eating right now? I am. I'm what is hungry. That? Where did you get and this factor meal is delicious. Where did you get that? I stole one from the box. Is oh, it? that was in the box that yeah. no one sees off camera? Okay. <laughs> and you didn't get it from the fridge? <laughs> no, yeah. So you're eating one of my factor meals, dude? <laughs> oh, it's yours? I thought that was anybody. Well, it's one of our sponsors, and I brought some for me to have when I'm in here working before. The, which, well, what kind did you get? It's jalapeno lime cheddar chicken. Hmm. All right, and? It's amazing. Okay. Why don't you take a bite for everybody? Let's do a quick mukbang with Isaiah. <laughs> Look at the camera when you... Uh, let's just be quiet and watch this. This will be fun. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> get on up in that microphone there, Isaiah. Get on up in that mic and uh, chew real good. Oh, yeah! <laughs> you like it? Mm hmm Yeah. So you said that's the, uh, what flavor is that? Jalapeno lime cheddar chicken. That sounds like something that would have been good for Cinco de Mayo. That was a question I originally asked. Did you do anything for Cinco de Mayo? <laughs> All right, you gotta, you gonna finish it, ain't you? Let's go to Sebastian. Did you do anything for the 5th of May? Oh, yes, I celebrated these margaritas. That's one of your favorite beers is the Corona. The Corona, they've got them on special, so I had to get a good value. But good for you, buddy. Uh, I did not drink anything Cinco de Mayo. Oh, I had to drive. So boring. I was in a dry county during Cinco de Mayo, and I had to drive. So that's why wow. I didn't celebrate it. Um, you actually are going to finish the whole thing, aren't you? What did you do? What did you do for dinner? Sunday. Yeah. When's the last time you ate? ate? <laughs> One o'clock. Mm -hmm. uh, do you celebrate Cinco de Mayo? Why are you, I do. Why are you putting your hand? I mean, I know I should just leave it uncovered. So. <laughs> it's funny. I've seen people do that before when they try to whisper. They'll put their hand up. 
because they don't want the people on this side to see. And that's I'm what you were just doing. Side lip readers. And you didn't want Sebastian to see you like chewing your food, but there's just a camera pointed right at you. <laughs> so everybody's going to see it anyway. You should be doing it this way, not like this. It's a COVID response. <laughs> He's still in the COVID response. Right, 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 right. So I didn't actually do anything for Cinco de Mayo. I'm, I'm shocked. <laughs> Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> That, uh, <laughs> it's a coast. I was like a. That was. Uh, didn't she open for Britney Spears? <laughs> <laughs> my my Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> now you got me wondering. Uh, Cinco de Mayo. I, uh, that's Cinco man, de Mayo. That's that's mayonnaise. Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo. I seen five God, jars of mayonnaise. Do you seeped in my damn head? I say. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well. Uh, happy. Uh, happy what is Cinco. Seventh of May. <laughs> Uh, uh, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. Happy Siete de Mayo. There we go. I got there. Yeah, I was, uh, so I did some gigs this past weekend in Myrtle Beach. If you're at my show in Myrtle Beach or in Tabor City, appreciate you coming. I'm going to get to those shows in a minute. Uh, Mother's Day's coming up, everybody. And uh, the guy who's going to be zooming into our show has, uh, a, an interesting Mother's Day idea, or a thing that he does for Mother's Day. You'll see it here in a minute. It's very good. Uh, Isaiah, what are you doing for your mama? So I have to work this Mother's Day, mm -hmm. so I actually took her out Saturday. Oh, what'd you do? And we went to Tazewell, Virginia, and I took her to this nice steakhouse called Cuz's and bought her lunch. <laughs> Does it? Oh, it just keeps getting yeah. better, doesn't it? <laughs> well, in the fanciest Why restaurants. Why funny to me? <laughs> how do you spell it? C U Z or Cuzo Mayo? Yeah, how do you? It's spelled C U Z apostrophe S. Oh, sounds like a five star steakhouse. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Judging by the yeah. outside, you wouldn't think that it's going to be a nice restaurant. Okay. Yeah. But just for the two of us to eat, it was like over a hundred bucks. So what? Okay, it's a steakhouse. It's a steakhouse, and it's and it, where? It, what would you say it was? Caswell. Caswell, not Caswell. <laughs> so that's the first thing I got because there's a Caswell, North Carolina, yeah. Caswell Beach. Yeah. And you're saying Tazewell. Yeah, Tazewell. Virginia. That's where the okay. Tasmanian devil lived. Right. How did you know? Yeah. And he lives He's going right out of there. But yeah, judge, like, if you were to look on the outside, you would think, oh, this place is going to suck. Because it used to be a barn, so they still have, like, the little silo up. Yeah, and but everything. sometimes those are the best places. <laughs> yeah. Really, they are. Those That's are how, what's what, Ruth Chris is getting ready to change their whole concept and go to the barn. Is that right? Yeah, they're, they're, they're tearing out all those napkins and tablecloths and Putting up stalls and Are you hay. Serious? Yeah, that's hot idea. in Virginia. Yeah, I mean, why wouldn't it work around here? I've, I never really liked the uh, unless you're on like a date or something. Like the idea of going to a restaurant that's really, really, really fancy and you yeah. got to dress up, you got to wear clothes that aren't comfortable. No, I want to go. I want to go to a barn and just let loose and, and have the exact same food that tastes just as good for way cheaper. Yeah. So I wonder if Ruth Chris will do that, like lower their no. price. No, Probably not. Now this <laughs> restaurant used to, you couldn't wear hats. And then when me and my mom walked in, <laughs> How many syllables was, was that word? <laughs> huh? Hats? Yeah. Okay. Just, I thought I heard you said Hyatt's. <laughs> I did. I turned it into like seven syllables. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't think anybody's ever turned hats, hats. into seven syllables. By the syllables. way, if you're watching, I'm not like making fun. I'm just enjoying it. That's all. I don't want people to think I'm belittling you. I, I just like the way you sound. It's fun. All right, so you don't have to wear hats no more? <laughs> well, they changed it, apparently, because I walked in, and I took my hat off, and I saw everybody else eating with their hats on, and I'm like, what's the deal? Last time <laughs> I ate here, you couldn't have hats. And it's like, oh, we changed that a couple years back. I'm like. So the uh, fine dining establishment of Cuzzes <laughs> <laughs> frowns on hats. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah, you can't. So you can't wear hats. You can't. Or, wear hats. or used to. Okay. Used but times to. have changed, and Cuzzes yeah, yeah. Cuzzes has opened up a little bit more now. Yeah. And then it woke. You, and it then got woke. It got woke. <laughs> Uh, and then you couldn't wear tank tops for the longest time, but I didn't pay attention to that. <laughs> Oh. So let me get this. <laughs> I, it, you, right. you, what you remember about a restaurant is whether or not you can wear a tank top or a hat. 
Have right, you ever worn that's, that's one of the things I yeah. remember because I thought, well, this is kind of odd. Why can't you wear a hat? In or your tank top. Why can't <laughs> I just not wear pants up in here? <laughs> what if I want to sit with my pants unbuckled? <laughs> Why do I have to put shoes on? Exactly. Why like, am I having to take a shower? It should just up? be more like come as you are. Just <laughs> all right. I kind of love you so much, <laughs> <laughs> Sebastian. What are you I don't know. Mother's Day. You gonna go? You gonna I go? can't think of anything. Brussels. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. I'm. I'm gonna. I think this year I'm gonna shock my mother and show up at her church. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yes, for me, it's always like some Mother's Day is this coming Sunday, but my mom's birthday is Wednesday. So it's kind of like when you have your birthday next to the Christmas kind of thing for her. Yeah. You know, so I think we're going to we're gonna go Longhorn, you know, probably have to wear it. Probably have to wear a clothes tank top. <laughs> but yeah, all right. Um, anyway, if you saw me in Myrtle Beach, thank you for coming. Uh, so this venue I did was called Wonders... It's actually called the Comedy Shop, and it's inside of a place called the Wonders Theater, and uh, it was it was interesting because I don't think a lot of people knew the comedy was going on in there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because Broadway, it's always changing and it's confusing. The Carolina Comedy Club, which mm -hmm. I used to do, is no longer there. It's like a it's like a, a, a draft poorhouse kind of thing now, and so. We had a good time, though, for the people who came. I appreciate it. Met a guy. This happened during my show. This guy got up and left to go pee. And there were many doors to get out of this place. Maybe it's because it's a magic place. <laughs> there were trap doors or something. Like This guy left, and he could not get back in. Like The door, it was a one-way door, right? The one that he chose to leave from. And he was a little drunk, and... And, and he'd been gone a minute, and I was worried about him. And, and so I had his friends, like, what's his name? His name was Kent. I was like, well, do you think he's coming back? I think he got locked out. So I got the guy's phone number, I gave him, and I called him, and, and he was, like, stuck outside. It, we made it a whole ordeal. <laughs> and I gave Kent some of my barbecue sauce during the show, South in Your Mouth. And uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping he'll call in because I gave him the phone number. He came up to me at the end, and he goes, man, that was, he's got a good accent like you, by the way. <laughs> he goes, man, that was great, blah, 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 you know, we had a good time, sorry about that, you're just one of my heroes, like, he's a big fan, he goes, I love your shows and all that stuff, and is there anything I can do to help? Because he goes, because I'm rich. <laughs> I was like, okay, well, how's 50K? <laughs> Let's just start there. I'll just throw a number out. So I'm hoping that maybe <laughs> Kent will be a sponsor or a, a Patreon supporter. We'll see if, if he calls in. I'm, he's either full of crap or he's really loaded. Some of these, you know, that happens sometimes when you get like, ex, you get a really, really eccentric rich guy. He's got so much, he's got F you and F me money. Mm. But we'll see if he's full of crap or not. All right, so that happened. Uh, Tabor City, thank you for coming to the show. We had a good time. Um, Isaiah, how is it still, you, you finish it? Not yet. Do you want to give Sebastian a bite? Sebastian, you want to have a bite? I'll, I'll, I'll cut a piece off this. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, there's nothing like, I don't know how you're even eating this since you was at fine dining last week yeah, and now you're eating out of a microwave <laughs> tray. Oh, by the way, they have perfected, this is Factor Meals, one of our sponsors. They've really perfected good. the microwave dish. It's no longer this, they don't freeze it. So when you, when you get it, Isaiah pointed to the boxes off camera, but... When you get it, it's a big cardboard box with like the little cooling things in there. It's not, it's not frozen. It's just, you keep it in the fridge. You heat it for two minutes and it's really good, right? Okay, we got a lot to do, guys. We got barbecue sauce. We got residual checks. This guy, uh, Chris Munch, very funny dude, is going to zoom in here. We got your, co your comments from last week. So uh, let's take a quick break. And uh, we'll be, don't you shut your peepers. We'll be right back with more Carolina Reaper. You know what I mean?
Hey everybody, John Reap here again, and I am sitting with Dr. Jay Moore. He is the doctor of life insurance, and let me tell you, the policies that this guy has will change your life for the better. So uh, look him up. Where can people find you? Uh, Uniforlife.com. That's my website. And also at Dr. J at Uniforlife on Facebook. Yes. So check him out. Tell him I sent you. And thank you. Hey there, John Reap here. Did you know that I have over half a million followers across all my social media? Yes, that's a little bit of a humble brag, but it's true. If you add them all up, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, all of it over half a million and I'm here to tell you something I'm open for business <laughs> that's right so if you have a product you know a business an organization something that you want to sell holler at me let's do this all you got to do is go to my website carolinareaper.com hit advertise and uh, let's get your business all up in my business right let's get to work all right and we're back uh, we got a very funny comedian zooming in here in a minute named Chris Munch and or Steven Stevens or Pastor Bobby or is it Chad? He's got a lot of different characters. You know what I mean? And we're going to get some phone calls for the Screen Actors Guild residual check game. Someone's going to win money here in a minute. Y'all let me know when, uh, when Chris Munch is on the line. All right. We'll let you know. Okay. Yeah. I had a quick question for you, John. Oh, yeah? So I watched the... Good, that took you forever to get to it. I was stalling forever. <laughs> Did you notice, Sebastian? I noticed you were hanging on. I was like, I'm just going to talk about random things until yeah. I, Isaiah finally asked the question. Yeah. He forgot to ask me at the top of the show. So I watched the Comedy Store documentary. The Comedy Store documentary. That yeah. came you out just now like, seeing that? Yeah, that came out four years ago. Right. It's great, by the way. Yeah, it's really good. But I had a question for you regarding like the comedy store because it's talking about being passed by Mitzi Shore, mm -hmm. the owner. And have you ever shared like when you got passed by Mitzi Shore <laughs> on the show? Uh, no, I don't think I have. <laughs> but uh, so I got I had an in when I moved to L.A. Uh, my buddy Jeff Richards was a comedian. We started together in Raleigh at Charlie Goodnights. He was already he had just moved to L.A. <clears throat> and he was uh, he was there maybe like a year or two before me, gotcha. and so when I moved to uh, Los Angeles, I uh, stayed with uh, Jeff on his couch for like a couple of months here and there, and uh, he got me into the comedy store. Like he introduced me. So there's a night where Mitzi sits back in the back of the room and she watches the new comedians, and. Uh, if she likes you, she'll make you a paid regular or, or non-paid regular, or what they called it. And uh, the problem, though, was she was getting older, and she wasn't always showing up to pass new people. So when she was there, it was important that that's the time you be seen, and you had to have somebody to remind her to watch, because everyone bugged her during the set. She's trying to watch these new comedians, and it'll be somebody else tapping her, and she'll like, hey, Mitzi, I just want to talk, you know. And she misses the comedians. So you had to have a buddy tap her on the shoulder when you were up there to remind her, oh, watch, you got to watch this one, you got to watch this one. So I had an end. My buddy Jeff made sure to remind Mitzi to watch my set. And it only took me one time to get in. So I did, I, I did my showcase set with her. I mean, some comedians have to do it like five, six times because she just misses it or she doesn't show up or she's not there. Back you know, when she was getting older. But yeah, and uh, she passed me first time. And at, at the end of my set, I walked up to her and introduced myself and said, thank you. And she goes, oh, you're great. You're fantastic. You're going to be fine. <laughs> Everybody in that documentary had a Mitzi Shore impression, and that's one another oh, thing I was going to yeah. ask you if you had yeah, one. That's how she talked. That's how. Oh, she he's here. Okay, um, let's get him in. He uh, just hopped in the room. Here. Okay, he's ladies here. and gentlemen, uh, we'll get Mark in here to make it look like this is. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to change shirts. <laughs> yeah, you want me to bring Mark in really quick? Yeah, we'll bring Mark in. And then you change of clothes. I'm going to do a wardrobe change. Okay, all right, and then. We're going to have a nice sit down with a very funny guy that uh, <clears throat> we discovered. I, well, I discovered recently. His name is Chris. Who's zooming? I'll tell you who's zooming. Chris 
much. And he's here with us right now, Mr. Chris Munch. How are you, sir? Doing good. Thanks for having me. Thanks for zooming in. Um, my, my buddy Mark here sent me your videos, and I couldn't stop laughing. At, you do a lot of different characters, and so yeah. far my favorite happens to be Steven Stevens. How many do you yes. have overall, though? So I've got four uh, that I do, but yeah, always always looking to add new stuff, but... Yeah. Uh, the, with the algorithms and all that stuff, it's kind of hard to know. It's like, do I just keep doing what's working or add new things and all that? But yeah, four right now. Four right now. And uh, the Steven Stevens character, what I loved about him is, uh, can you describe for the people at home yeah. a little bit about Steven Stevens? Yeah. So Steven Stevens is, uh, he's a guy who's like ultra confident and probably shouldn't be, is maybe the way I would describe it. <laughs> yeah. You know, he's, he's, he's looking for love. He's single. Lives with his mother, uh, and it's just kind of <laughs> on like all me for just a minute. Uh, always trying, always putting himself out there, and uh, uh, but you know has some uh, great qualities. Uh, <laughs> he's a sweetheart, uh, but also has some things that maybe wouldn't be super attractive to yeah. to women. Hey there, ladies. My name is Stephen Stevens. I teach speech. And Sand Springs sixth grade centers and secondary schools go Sandites. Just wanted to wanted to get on here and say hey, and just say you know if um, if you like what you see and you like what you hear, then uh, just go ahead and give it the old swipe right, and uh, we'll see if we can't make some sparks fly. So, How did you come up with the lip smacking part? And that's what I love the most is the lip smacking. We all know a guy that has a little bit of a dry yeah. mouth and does that. And then you, you bringing it to life is excellent. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it really comes from, I, I, I didn't originally have that in his character, but as I did it more, uh, there's something about just like a quietness that I like about him <laughs> that makes you feel uncomfortable. So everything is really quiet. And he's too close to the camera. <laughs> um, and so it's just a little bit off, offsetting, you know, just a little bit makes you feel a little uncomfortable. And so the, the, just the natural noises that your mouth make. Yes. Like, I, I see this a lot in live situations where if someone's holding a mic close to them, you know, and they, they take a breath, there's just a little noise that happens. And so if you just kind of accentuate those noises, <laughs> yeah. it's very unsettling for people. So, so it's was... just kind of this idea of like, Trying to just have a little tick about him that that he's not aware of. Yeah, uh, so that the, that was always intentional. Um, I'm wondering if you discovered it accidentally or if it was intentional from the very beginning. Yeah, but so so that was an accidental. That was a happy accident. There it was like the first time I did it, it was just like, oh, that's kind of funny. <laughs> if if I actually just started making more noises, <laughs> yeah. and so I have definitely like if you watch the early videos, there's is the little bit of mouth noises, but I've I've certainly kind of. Juiced it up a little bit. Since yeah. Then. Well, good good <laughs> job, man. You got lightning in a bottle there. Because yeah. Also, yeah. I think that you could you could even even though we're not there, we could still smell your breath. <laughs> right. And the yeah. breath probably it feels bad. like you can smell the guy's breath. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's way, way so too, yeah. He's way too close. He's you know the guy the close talker. Even though he's on video, <laughs> it's like I just try to get up there where. <laughs> yeah. I like the dress. I like close. the way you dress him up too, and I like the. I think you've got someone who yeah. wears a fake gold, like a big gold chain that he's, that's not cool no more. Yeah. Yeah. And he's doing the one with, uh, with for Mother's Day. You have like a, do you have a, a is it called cam, Cameo for, for this guy? Oh, yeah. I, I used to be on Cameo. Now I do them all uh, through my website. But yeah, I do personalized messages for people and <laughs> wish them happy Mother's Day and Oh. Happy birthdays as the character. It's pretty. It's a lot, it's a lot of fun. I'm going to sign up for that because I want one for my wife, who's a mother, and oh. you should get one for yeah. Nicole. I'll Mark. get one for Nicole. <laughs> That'd be great. So yeah, I would love to. <laughs> now you're you're zooming in from Tulsa, right? That's correct. Yeah. Are you born and raised Tulsa? Uh, no, born in North Dakota. Uh, so another thriving, you know, Midwestern area. Yeah. Uh, but moved to Oklahoma when I was a teenager, or actually like a. a 
you know, I think I was 10 around in there. Okay. I've been to North uh, Dakota. Is where, Where's Minot? Is that North Dakota? Yeah, that's North Dakota. Yeah, actually, my family is from just north of Minot. Um, that's yeah, Canada, right? I mean, yeah, it's really, they're just like 30 minutes, 45 minutes from Canada. Yeah. I, I love North Dakota. It's I mean, I, it's beautiful. It's really, you know, there's not a lot going on up there. And I never thought, you know, performing – you know, as a kid, you don't, I didn't know anybody who was a professional performer or anything like that. So it was kind of one of those dreams that was just like, never seemed attainable. Even in Oklahoma, same thing. It's like, Mm -hmm. so it's kind of, I never really thought I could be doing this kind of stuff. uh, And, and now I am, it's kind of wild. So, well, it's hilarious. Um, And you're, 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 you're doing stand up as well. I was just in Tulsa. I wish I would have met you before uh, uh, this. So I could, could have seen you do some stand up. I've seen a couple of clips. How long have you been oh, doing sure. stand up? So I've just been doing stand up for probably three years, I would say. Okay. Now, what 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 made you leave North Dakota for Tulsa? Your yeah. Parents? So my parents came down here to work with a church that was uh, starting down here. So okay. Yeah. So I've, I've, I've been raised in the church. I worked in the church. Actually, I was on staff at a church for twenty two years. Okay. Uh, and so just. Uh, yeah, like three years ago, so, it left that position. That's how you and, protected uh, Pastor Bobby. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pastor Bobby is, yeah. Oh, he's just a, uh, oh, hey, man. Thank you for bringing it up. Uh, <laughs> he's just an amalgamation of all the wonderful orators yeah. I've yeah. been under for years and years. He's got a date night hack for you. You're going to love it. Next time you take your better half out on a date, take him to Hobby Lobby. Why? You're going to laugh. <laughs> it's like walking around in a museum. I mean, I put this artwork up against anything I've ever seen with a French Louvre. Even though there are security cameras, I have been known to steal a kiss or two in the fabric section. So we got Pastor Bobby. We got Steven Stevens. Yeah. Um, Chad. 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 Tell me about Chad. Chad. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes, Chad. <laughs> uh, I, it really is my... I've always been like frustrated by like kind of the hustle bro culture, just oh a hustle gosh. culture of just kind of like that. The reason you don't have this is because you didn't work hard enough, <laughs> kind of that mentality. Yeah. And so uh, obviously I believe in hard work, but like this idea that just like no excuses, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. Just, it's kind of my way of maybe poking at that idea or maybe trying to, challenge that idea a little bit. And so he's just, you know, ridiculous sales guy, <laughs> multi-level marketer kind of guy. What's up, Chad Nation and Chad here. Um, I got a little break in the action. And so I thought I'd take a second to just invest in my tribe. Uh, you know, I get this question a lot. It's like, how do you take every single relationship in your life and turn it into a money-making opportunity? And for me, it's real simple, right? Like I, I don't have friends. I don't have family. All I have our opportunities. And that is how you get the W. How did this whole thing start for you? I mean, you, you live in Tulsa yeah. and what, 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 what are you doing? What's the day job, I guess? Yeah. Yeah. So I do this full time, believe it or not. Here we go. I, That's what I'm talking so, about. So good. Yeah. So I left my position working at a church, um, really because I just, I felt like it was time to, and I, you know, you know what you believe or whatever. I just felt like God was kind of saying like, it's time to step out and like do your thing. And uh, I was really scared to, but I had a friend who said, uh, you should do social media stuff. Yeah. And I just was like, I don't know. I don't know that I want to be a part of that world. Right. <laughs> and, uh, but I knew enough. I knew I couldn't just step out and just be like a stand up comic overnight. You know, I knew that wasn't going to be a possibility. So it was kind of just like, okay, well I'll just try doing this. And I've always loved doing characters. I've always loved acting and um, I worked on the creative team at my church. So that was a lot of what I had been doing over the last 20 years was doing creative work and writing sketches and all kinds of stuff. Okay. Hey, do you, are you working on any new stuff? Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm always looking for, for new characters. Um, but again, I, it's, it's hard to know. Like, again, you're just like trying to be consistent and it's working. So it's like I hate to like yeah. do less of one character because right. I'm trying some new character or whatever. So I'm kind of like – and the, I feel like the audience is always kind of – it's new people always coming in. So they're not old. The characters aren't old to the new people. 
So, I mean, I, but I, I have some ideas and some characters I'd like to do. I just want to do somebody with like a with a long ponytail. I think would be really fun. <laughs> kind of like a like a yoga guy or something yeah, like yeah. that. Do you know, if you, I don't know if you guys have seen Dad Life, but that was a big. Wait it's a like minute. fourteen million views. Wait a minute. Yeah, <laughs> it's a rap video, right? Or, yeah, rap video. I have yeah. seen that. Yeah, you didn't tell yeah. me that part. I didn't remember that part. <laughs> <laughs> Gas station glasses, don't care what the masses think about me with my sweet goatee. I'm rocking my dockers with a cuff and a crease. I got that St. John's Bay and the clip for my piece. I look nice. I got dozens of dollars and that's right. It goes straight to my daughters and my wife. I'm a miracle dad. Would that be the first thing that hit for you then in terms of... Yeah, so that was... Yeah, that was back in 2010, and yeah. I was working at the church at the time. And so that was, I mean, that was the whole thing where we're like, we're just doing this for our, the dads of our church, and it just caught fire somehow. And, I mean, we had Adam Sandler's production company reaching out to us. America's Got Talent reached out to us. It was really crazy. Uh, it was super cool. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I was working at the church, so I, di- I didn't really pursue any of that stuff or, like, you yeah, know. Yeah, I, yeah. So, it well, just so didn't he, really. He, he's got natural, built-in talent. Yeah. yeah, it's been a it's been a cool cool journey, and and uh, you know honestly, like where this whole thing leads, I don't I honestly don't really know. I just uh, NBC just reached out to me a couple weeks ago. The like some um, executive, uh, what were they? The some casting directors, I guess. Okay. Some, the, the, some of that, and so we talked, and you know they're like, hey, we'd love to, you know, have you try out for some different things and all that, but. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, you know, it's just wild. I don't. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought. Wow, man. So what? Tell me. Uh, let's sell some of your products. What? What do you sell? What's What's your favorite product right now? Oh yeah. So I mean, the personalized messages are 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 really fun because it's just a way to to get into their world even deeper. So they give me information about the person, and then I can basically, right. if, you know, if it's even one, then I'll just. And ask them out on a date or whatever and talk about all the fun stuff we could do based on the information that was given. So it's just another way to get a little little deeper into the world there. Uh, but uh, right now I'm selling Mother's Day cards, which is which has been cool too. So it's like a just a card for mom yeah. with a ridiculous picture on it. I do a calendar every year that has – every month has a different picture of Steven on there and <laughs> pretend like mother mother took all the photos. <laughs> we gotta get one. We gotta get one of the calendars. Just hang it up back here. Just have it on the yeah, wall. There you go. Me. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's. Oh hilarious. yeah. I'll send you one. Man, yeah, I can't so. thank you enough for for taking the time to zoom in to us. Oh man, my pleasure. Thanks so much for for having me, Mark. You got any final thoughts? Nah, you? man. Keep doing what you're doing. I think uh, you're gonna be great, man. And you're. Mm-hmm. He's already there. He's already there. He's gonna yeah. be greater. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, so if you ever do a, a show and you need a. A comedian, let me know. I know one. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, uh, cool. what's the website I should point people towards? Uh, ChrisMunchComedy.com. There you go. That'd be great. ChrisMunchComedy.com. Chris Munch, thank you very much. My pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. <laughs> All right. Chris Munch. Love you munchies. Y'all check him out. Follow him on all his socials. Get you a Mother's Day greeting. Very funny guy. All right, we got people uh, calling in. Uh, As you see, I got a lot of these Screen Actors Guild residual checks right here. Someone is going to win one of these. Now, you might, if you're new to the show, you might be thinking, "What? What is this?" Well. I'm not just a podcaster, comedian, I'm also an actor. Been in movies, sitcoms, TV shows, voiceovers, adult films, you name it, I've done it. When they air them, they have to pay me. They're called residual chicks. Thought I'd make a game out of it. So we're going to take three phone calls at random, right? I'm going to open one of these checks, and you try to guess the amount of the check. Closest person to the actual amount is going to win the check. It is a game that we like to call How Much Is That Screen Actors Guild Residual Check Oh, boy. That was good. All right. That was good. I was there. 
That's why I couldn't hear you. you I was just straight to there. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen people do that before? Yeah. Sometimes I'll do it like, you know, the whisper. I'll notice like you do it like this. I'll, I'll do it the wrong way by accident. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. Oh, <laughs> like it's going the wrong way. You know. Mouth it it's off. a little misdirect. Yeah. Anyway, we got people on the phone. Um, why don't you, um, how do we do this? You know, pick, pick, <laughs> pick a number. Isaiah, fast. Pick a number between one and ten. Five. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four. Five. There's the check. I'm gonna play with that one. All right. So I'm gonna open the check. <clears throat> I'm gonna tell everybody on hold what it's for. Okay. And then we're gonna take three of your phone calls at random. We have this. We have the uh, randomizer right here. It's a spinning ball of balls. These balls have numbers on them. That's the number of call we're gonna take. It's very random. But I'm gonna read you the check. <laughs> <laughs> is that a crying or is that a happy? I don't want to give anything away. <clears throat> but I've opened the check. <laughs> I'm going to play the game. <clears throat> this is for... <laughs> you look at it again. It's paid television. It's for... I did one episode of American Dad. Yeah. Called Damn Stan. <clears throat> and... Uh, yeah, it's uh, just a quick voiceover. We'll do some in-house guests, and that way when you, you guys on hold can uh, try and, you'll know how to gauge how you should be guessing, because we'll pick a winner within the show. <laughs> They're not going to win between uh, Isaiah and Sebastian, but it'll help you gauge how you should be guessing. Sebastian, how much is this check? I'm going low this time, Okay. since it's a cartoon. I'll, I okay. I'm not going to say that's a good strategy or a bad yeah. strategy. Uh, but you know how to read my poker face. Yeah, right? I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm going high now. I'm gonna, huh? go, gonna go. Oh no! Yeah, I'm Am gonna I go throwing your curveballs. Yeah, curveball. Twenty-two fifty. Twenty-two dollars and fifty cents. Twenty-two dollars and fifty cents. All right, Isaiah. Thirty-two dollars <laughs> and seventy-three cents. If I had to give this check away to somebody in the room, because whoever's closest wins the check. It's not. Not Price Bob Barker. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. 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 That's a long one. Uh, you would win. Yes. He's closer. But he's not exactly right. And he's not going to win. Somebody on hold is going to win. Spin the random ball of balls. Spin the ball. Sebastian, pick a, pick a number, and that's the number of caller we shall take. And right here I see caller number 45. Been fooled or rasher on the 45. Remember that song? Anyway, caller number 45, Alan Jackson. Whenever you're ready, let him into the showroom. All right, they're in the, long, in the room. All right, hello there. This is John Reap. Who am I talking to? Um, Braxton. Braxton? Yeah. All right, buddy. Where are you calling from? Uh, Kentucky. Kentucky. KY. Some of my favorite marmalade is from there. Oh, I thought you were going <laughs> to jelly. KY uh, Jelly, it's yeah. the best. I've had some. <laughs> I know you. We ate, ate it with a peanut butter sandwich. Yeah. On the show. What part of Kentucky <laughs> are you from? Um, South Central. Oh, that's only in Los Angeles. <laughs> there is no uh, such thing as South Central. You have to be from LA. Well, just, just say Eastern. Eastern Kentucky. Okay. Mm. What uh, is there a name of a town I might know or? Um. Was it Somerset, County? Pulaski County, Somerset. Dude, you know my theory on this? Yeah. All right, so it's probably like a small kind of town, Braxton? Yeah. Yeah. See, I have a theory. I don't know if you heard of Lake Cumberland. It's right near Lake Cumberland. It's one of the biggest lakes in Kentucky. Gotcha. See, I have a theory about um, if you're from, if you're not from a city, mm -hmm. right? So technically, yeah. Hickory <clears throat> is a city. I've always made it sound really small, but it's, you know, it's a city. Um, and it's beautiful. I love it. One day I'll be mayor. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, uh, the, the people from small towns, I've noticed, sometimes they don't say the name of their town. Yeah. They just say the county. Yeah. Like, I technically could say, when you ask me where I'm from, I could say Catawba County. But then you'd be like, that's oh, even that's, worse. That's, that's, even that's pretty vague. Why don't you give yeah. me the city? I'd say Hickory. But this guy, Braxton, you gave me the county name, didn't you? Yeah. 
Why did you choose the county name and not the name of the town? I don't know. <laughs> He's only that bourbon. It's a thing. It's a thing. I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> He's drinking He's sipping bourbon. some some good uh, Kentucky uh, bourbon. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what What do you do for a living? I work for actually. I work for the Department of Transportation. Oh, the DOT. And what do you do yeah. for the DOT? I road maintenance. I drive a snowplow in the wintertime. Oh, wow. A little bit of everything. Well, that sounds fun, though. I like that. I've I never like even it. been on a snowplow. That'd Very be a fun, fun job. Yeah. I'd love to do it. Yeah. Okay, Brax Braxton, my friend yeah. from Kentucky. Uh, have you ever seen American Dad? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. I was on one episode. Let me ask you, how much is this Screen Actors Guild residual check? Mm, I'm going to say $42.75. Wow, dude. Do we have... I I swear to... You sound just like Isaiah. Are you trying to do an impression of Isaiah Braxton? <laughs> no. <laughs> What's your last name, dude? Uh, Palsy. Palsy? Like cerebral? <laughs> no, T, uh, Talby, like... Polly. T A U L B E E. Oh, I lost the two. See? <laughs> I, I love it. I love it. <laughs> Isaiah, you sound just like him a little bit. Let, well, I'm trying to. Um, let's. Uh, so, so uh, Braxton, I want you to repeat what Isaiah says. Let Isaiah say it first, and then I want you to say it, okay? Okay. <clears throat> Isaiah, uh, say anything about the document, docuseries you just saw. Just give me like a f real fast, anything. Oh, uh, it was a great documentary. 10 out of 10. Would recommend. Braxton. Yeah. Now you, you want me to repeat that? Yes, please. It was a great documentary. 10 out of 10. Would recommend. Come on, guys. That's yeah. pretty close. That's an AI thing right yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like. Okay, so uh, we got you locked in at uh, forty-two dollars and something. Forty-two yeah. seventy-five. Forty-two seventy-five. Okay, don't hang up. We're gonna take two more calls at random. So far, you're winning, Braxton. Spin the ball of balls, Sebastian. But yeah, he's locked in at forty-two, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> That's the lock-in noise. Okay. Oh wow, forty-six. You just gave me forty-five. And now you literally just gave me 46. Wow. Out but of all those balls. If I, if I next enough pulls 47. That's going to be insane. We're going to the yeah, we're gas station. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Deanna Jackson, let color number 40, uh, 46 <laughs> in here. Please and thank you. All right, they're in the line. <clears throat> Hello there. You're, uh, if you can hear my voice, tell me your name. Kent. Kent. Wait a minute. Oh, my God. Wait. Oh my God. <laughs> is this the kid that came to my show in Myrtle Beach? I am the one. Oh boy. I'm loving this. Welcome to the show, Kent. Um, well, it is a pleasure to talk with you. Tell us a little bit about what you saw Friday night in Myrtle Beach. The greatest show there ever was. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was going to say, I saw the outside a long time. <laughs> yeah, tell him. Uh, yeah, I, I wasn't going to go there, John. <laughs> no, I have to, Ken. It's amazing. I, You were at my show. You were with, like, what, two other couples? Yes, sir. Okay. And it was a new venue. I, I wasn't used to it. I don't think you guys were used to it. And there were a lot no, of sir. there were a lot of doors, and why don't you <laughs> too many doors? Too many doors, and uh, <laughs> let's just go over it real quick, Kent. Tell everybody what happened. This is great. Oh my God! Um, <laughs> well, I, I had to pee, and uh, <laughs> when you got to, you got to. So yeah, yeah. first thing I done is jump up, went to the left, and didn't realize I could have went to the right. Went to the left, went out, ended up going outside out of the wrong door, and uh, then I couldn't get back in. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then you were gone for a good, what, would you say 10, 15 minutes? Oh, at least. Yeah. And so then what happened? Well, I come to try to get back in, and there was three sets of doors, and they ain't none of them open. 
Yeah. And then this 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 guy named John Reek somehow got a hold of my phone number and called me. Yes. So the friends that were sitting with you, I said, "Give me his number. We need to find him." So I, I wanted you back in there because uh, you actually I said, it "Because yeah, they wouldn't let me back in." <laughs> <laughs> how many? How much drinks had you had that night, Kent? One, but it was a big one. <laughs> <laughs> one big one. All right. So <laughs> I, I believe I gave you some of my barbecue sauce. You did, and we killed it. What? Already? We have, oh yeah, gone. What'd you put it on? Pizza. <laughs> Pizza. <laughs> I haven't thought about it. I mean, I know, I know it's for ribs and, and, and whatever, but th that night it was good on pizza. Nice. Well, tell everybody where you're, where you're calling in from, Kent. Shiloh, uh, North Carolina. Oh. It's right out of Myrtle Beach. Yep. About 25 minutes from Myrtle Beach. Uh, it's a good town. It's in, as the other guy says, in Brunswick County, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's called Shiloh, and yep. uh, it's a good place. What do you do for a living? We buy and sell cars. Oh, okay. Oh, that's right. We talked about that on stage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so we yeah, just live here. It's kind of funny. My buddy has a pizza place, so hey, we just going to put on some pizza, and it worked. <laughs> He said, I said, what do you do for a living? He goes, I, he goes, I buy and sell cars. I'm like, I feel like that's a wash. Yeah. You buy them, then, you, I mean, it's the same, you know. It's like if you see a logging truck going this way and another logging truck going this way. I feel like a phone yeah, call. Oh, my could God. Have, you know, could have cut this <laughs> right? Um, but do you remember what you said to me at the end of the show when you came up to me? What did you say? Um, I don't know. You, you said, <laughs> you, you said uh, you're a big fan of mine. And that you, oh you, yeah, you you said I was your, I was your hero, and then you, you said, are. You can ask anybody that. <laughs> and then you said it took me long enough to it took me long enough for you to come down to Myrtle Beach so I could go see you. So I just I just got all my peeps and I said I'm paying. Come on, we're going. I love. And it. they had a blast. Good. Thank you so much, Kent. But you also said, "Is there anything I can do for you? Because I'm rich." Remember that. I think I did say that. <laughs> I'll never forget it. Because whenever I hear somebody say, I'm rich, I start thinking, well, how can I get some of that money? Because we're always yeah. looking for sponsors and, and you know, uh, Patreon supporters of the show. And if you want to do that, you know, we could uh, help you buy and sell cars or maybe sell some pizza. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, I'm going to tell you what. One way or another, we're going to get the world on your barbecue sauce. I love it. All right, Kent, I appreciate you calling. Let's play the game. Um, this is for one episode of American Dad. How much is yes, the sir. Screen Actors Guild residual check? $29.99. That's a call. Cool yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh. Don't hang up, Kent. We got one more call to take. Um, no that? one's got it exactly right yet. I'm she sure that was Kent, not Andy Griffith. <laughs> right. It didn't sound. It sounds a little bit. We got some great accents on this episode. I know. <clears throat> Isaiah's Braxton, Kansas is great. Can't see. Can't wait to say who's. Let's see, see if we get next. number forty. He's locked in at twenty nine ninety nine. Woo! All righty. Caller number thirty six. Ah. Uh. Caller number thirty six. The Alan. Jackson, sorry, I'm burping. Um, let color number 36 into the showroom. All right, they're in the room. Hello there, this is Hello. John Reap. If you can hear my voice, tell me your name. My name is Mark. I'm your long lost cousin from Corpus Christi, Texas. Mark Reap? Mark Lawing. Oh, Mark. Mark Lawing, wait a minute. You are my cousin then. Because um, my ditty. Your ditty. Right? His sister, Kay Reap, yep. married a lawing. And so I got some lawings as, as cousins. Now, have when's the last time we saw each other? Well, we haven't seen each other. Mm -hmm. I was quizzing you, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I said I'm your long lost cousin. Right. Yes. Well, I hope to meet you one day. What do you do? What did you say? What part of Texas? 
I mean, uh, well, outside of Corpus Christi, you can call it an Oasis County, being everybody's saying county. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. All right. And uh, what do you do for a living, buddy? I'm a uh, superintendent for a crane company. Oh, wow. Oh, this guy's making some big bucks. <clears throat> Would you like to be a sponsor? Well, <laughs> yes, sir. Right. Actually, I just, uh, I, I just actually just got done running for the Oasis County Appraisal District Board here in Texas. We were one of the first 50 counties with over 75,000 people to elect board members. What? Oh, that's awesome. Congrats, man. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. So your cousin's getting up in the political I, before you are. Well, see, because I'm pretty, I've been toying with the idea of running for mayor here in Hickory. So maybe I can learn a thing or two from you. Yes, sir. I remember you ran here a while back. So I was like, you know what? Cousin, you do it. I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tried to run. And it turns out I wasn't living in, uh, at the time exactly in the district. So I, yes, didn't, I didn't qualify, but I might, I might re-up it. I don't know. I'm going to talk to the current mayor about that one of these days. Moose, we got to get Hank on the show, don't we? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that would be a good episode. Do you think Hank, the current mayor, would come on? This podcast, or would he come up with his? Would he, would he come up with his like guard up? You know what I mean? Yeah, I think we should do it. Let's get Hank back. We should have a debate. Yeah, I, well, I would do a debate, but I'd also like to do just a regular sit down with him hmm. and uh, see what his thoughts are. Like, would he get really mad if I ran? <laughs> and would he like come at me? Would there be like, you know, we're gonna have to. You know, slur tactics yeah. and stuff. Because I don't want any part of that. Well, you got hush money to pay, too. You're going to have to pay a lot of hush money That's out. That's right. Hank, I can be bought off, dude. Hmm. I don't have to run. <laughs> I don't have to run if Hank sponsors the... If the city of Hickory sponsors the podcast. No. Somehow through Hank. Anyway. <laughs> All right. Uh, Cousin Lawling. I want you to tell me. Have you ever seen American Dad? Yes, sir. Here, a time or two, you know, whenever we got time, whenever we ain't doing yeah. news interviews and running political stuff. You know, I hear you. <laughs> put it on here and there, you know. Well, I only did one episode. I don't really watch it too much, but it's very successful Seth uh, MacFarlane uh, production. But uh, how much is this Screen Actors Guild residual check? Let's go with the year it is because election's coming up, 2024. So let's call it 20. 404. Let's reverse the numbers. 2404. $24.04. 24 okay, lock him in. Uh, don't, don't hang up. Will you uh, hand that to... Uh, so here's what's happening now, everybody. Um, we've got the guesses in here. Isaiah's going to take the check and give it to uh, the Alan Jackson. Uh, I don't do math, so I don't know who won <laughs> I can't figure, I don't crunch the numbers. So we give it to the smartest person we know in this room. It happens to be Alan Jackson. And what Alan does is he takes your guesses, the three people that called in, and he, 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 does, he does the numbers. It's like that, uh, that movie uh, with uh, the, the Australian, Russell Crowe, where he oh, did yeah, the yeah. equations um, in his brain, a beautiful mind. Yeah, is that that's, what it was? that's what Alan's got. Alan has a beautiful, look right now, he sees numbers floating. And he is deciphering who won rapidly through his brain. I could never do such a thing. I gotta, I gotta use my fingers. Well, you went to an agricultural school too. I did. I went Alan to, went to a real university. Well, I went to two agricultural schools. Yeah, French E. Ford and NC State. So yes, we don't do numbers. We like to get our hands in the mud. So. Yeah, you can drive a tractor though. I actually can't. I've never I know. Had. You're such a. Shame. <laughs> I majored in stand-up comedy. Oh, he's swiping. He's grabbing numbers now. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, pretty soon he's going to have the, uh, the total, or the actual the figure, and he'll tell us. And he'll, he'll hand the check. Oh, here we go. He's got it. All right. This is great. Now he's going to hand the check to Isaiah. Isaiah's going to run it back in here to us. And then, uh, you know, this is the fun part for me. Thank you, Isaiah. Appreciate you. I like your hand today. <laughs> All right. This is where it gets good. Mm, this is where it gets nerve-wracking. The only person in the world right now who knows the winner of this Screen Actors Guild residual check for one episode of American Dad, the only person 
Because I guess I don't do math. You're right. You don't know how much it I is. I don't even know. I can't He see doesn't it. know how much it is. You don't know how much it is. Only Alan knows. Only Alan knows. One man. How much it is. And this is the part where I try to coax the answer out of him. Or I try to convince him to tell me or reveal to us who the actual winner is. He doesn't like to give it up that often. It usually takes a minute. You gotta be nice. You gotta say sweet things like, your hair looks good today. And uh, I like how fast you crunch the numbers. Things you would say to get Alan to give you the answer. Uh, I thought we was playing $25,000 no, here, man. I was trying to think of a good sound effect. <laughs> So let me look, uh, I'm gonna look back here at the booth. I'm gonna look into the camera because Alan's looking at the screen because he wears many ha hats. He's not just a famous country singer. He's also a producer of the show. Switches the cameras around. And right now he's looking at this, which means I'm looking at him. And he's looking at me. And I'm looking at him. Oh wow. Like the Alan Jackson, whenever you're ready, please, would you let back into the showroom, the winner of the Screen Actors Guild residual check, please. Oh, great, wow. Whew. I'd be happy to. That was, wow, that was good. No, nah, I'd be happy to. Um, <clears throat> oh. I'll admit, I wasn't really paying attention during the game. <laughs> So I think I got the right person. Okay. Do you remember, do you remember how much the check was? I do. Okay. I do. I think this is the person who won. All right. Uh, All I'll right. admit, I, I did zone out for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. One part of it. Um, let me bring in this one. I'm okay. pretty sure I'm right. <laughs> All right. It's a Steve we'll, uh, Harvey moment. Yeah. So, we'll find okay. out. Let's see. Just let him in. All right. So the person I'm pretty sure won yeah. is now in the room. Okay. Hello there, this is John Reap. If you can hear me, tell me your name. This is Mark Lawing. Mark Lawing, my cousin. Yeah. What was your guess? That was right. Okay. I reversed election years. Yeah. That's right. His guess was $20.04. $24.04. $24.04. Yeah. Something like that. And the other guys were we had, a, we had a guess for $29.99. And yeah. we had a guess for $42.75. All right, here we go. The actual amount of this check, Mark Lawley, I can tell you what it's for, the actual amount. Or you can skip the check. You could forfeit the check and you could go for an item in the mystery bag of merchandise. And there could well, be- Well, you know me. You know me, I always want the mystery bag of merchandise. Okay. So do you want to know how much the check was? Do you want to know how much you lost just now? Well, um, yeah, you can tell me how much we lost, but hey, it goes into your pocket and hopefully you'll buy me some yard time. I appreciate you, buddy. All right. Yes, sir. This is the check that you passed up. The actual amount is 25 cents. <laughs> One. Man, we, we all gave you high praises, man. We expected the best. <laughs> One American quarter. <laughs> From American wow. Dad. <laughs> from American Dad. So I get to keep I'm this. I'm a winner again. I appreciate you, buddy. Let's reach my hand in here and see what we got in the mystery bag of merchandise. And I'm just oh, going to grab like a Jody. tank top. Isaiah loves tank tops. <laughs> can wear that to the... I got you a tank top that just says, bless your heart. That's it. I'm going to get you this and... A CD. I'm going to mail these out to you myself. He so, Mark Long, I need you to go to um, carolinareaper.com. Click on the contact section. Send me your name and address and the amount of the check. And that is how I will know where to send your free gifts. I'll probably put more random stuff in there, too. Is that cool, buddy? Um Yes, yeah, there's some Texas bar or some barbecue sauce to try down here in Texas would be great too, brother. Well, now that you said that, I just might do it because we got well, I... we got the original. We now got the hot version of barbecue sauce, and just recently, just added 
straight up hot sauce. This is not barbecue sauce. It is actual hot sauce made with the Carolina Reaper pepper. Um, it's called hysterically hot sauce. You know, I might be a comedian, but this hot sauce is no joke. Would you like the we barbecue def sauce? We definitely got to try it down here. It's your hot sauce. You want the hot sauce? Okay, I'm gonna send you some hot sauce along with this other stuff. How's that sound, buddy? All right, now thank you, sir. Thank you for calling in, and thank you all for calling in. Um, yeah, don't forget to uh, check out <laughs> carolinareaper.com and, 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 and spread the love. All right, let's move on. Uh, I want to read some comments from last week. Last week, I asked everybody, did you see the David Tepper video? Mm, yeah. Did you see this? Yeah. What are your thoughts on that real Man. quick? I mean, he's not, he's not winning over many new fans, is he? No. You never it's take a man's hat off. Oh, I know. I'd have slapped him on you. <laughs> well, had you not, like, if you didn't know that was David Tepper. Yeah. I mean, I guess in Charlotte at a sports bar, you're going to know who Tepper is. But he's not on TV every day. I mean, there are people walking around in the everyday world that don't know who the guy is. Mm -hmm. He's lucky he didn't get slapped, you know, taking a man's hat off like that. Anyway, I asked everybody, what do they think of it? Um, Steven Wilder, <clears throat> he said, never seen a team fall apart as fast as the Panthers since their Super Bowl appearance. Yeah. Um, have we made the playoffs after our Super Bowl appearance? I think maybe so. Maybe once? Once, maybe. Yeah, it's not been great, Steve. Um, Cam started uh, not doing well. And then uh, who do we have after Cam. There was somebody before Bryce Young. Was it Sam Darnold? Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold. Oh, guys, a bunch of people. Sam Darnold had his moments. We had uh, Kal Kal Allen. Kal, Kal Allen. Kal Kal yeah. Yeah, I called him Kal Allen. You had uh, the, 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 the dude from Cleveland, the, the, um, the, the kid from Cleveland with the, with the arm. <laughs> yeah, uh, Baker Maker. Ba Baker Maker. <laughs> <laughs> Baker Making Field. Baker Making Bad. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I, I hear you, Steve. It's going to be a – we can't do any worse. Now, we, were, we won three games last year, four games. Uh, Bob Haynes, LOL. It made John look like Thurman from Bad Santa or something. Okay. Bob, after looking up who Thurman from Bad Santa was, not only are you correct and not only was that hilarious, it is also insulting. <laughs> <laughs> Someone posted an AI image of me. <clears throat> it, it, Alan, I don't know if you have time to look up this. You'll do you, So last week, yeah, you got it. Do you remember the image that uh, the image that uh, whoever it was put up there? Isaiah, I'm looking right at you. Oh, oh sorry, uh, I was busy looking at the image. Oh my god. <laughs> So, uh, Alan, whenever you can, if you can look, just no, don't. I'm I'm saying look up, um, so people can see who Thurman from Bad Santa is. Character Thurman. <laughs> Bad Santa. Someone typed in the AI John Reap, and and something similar to this kid popped up, and uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, way to go. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Diana Dollar, she goes, I heart the Goodwill bag. Yeah, so um, we're now playing the Goodwill hunting. We're not using boxes anymore. They now have bags. Oh. I think there's a bag over there. But yeah, so now when you go to Goodwill, they're not going to hand, they're, they're not going to give you your stuff in a cheesy little cheap grocery bag. They got their own nice Goodwill bags. You wow. You a lot of stuff in there, wow. so it's great. Hmm. Um, Daryl Lawson, he goes, John, this is Daryl from Birmingham, the overall dude. Your work is awesome. I wish I could follow more. Me too. I don't know what he means by follow more. Do you mean you want more things for, you want me to put out more things? I don't know how you couldn't, how you, how you follow someone more. If you're already following them, how do you follow them more? Do you get closer? Do you get closer behind them. <laughs> I don't know how to answer that. It's kind of creepy. No, I'll take it, Daryl. I need it. Get closer, buddy. And is that how he really, is that how Daryl actually spells his name? 
That's probably no, because Alan's pulling it straight up, right, from Facebook. That's how he signed up. That is from Facebook, and he doubled down on it with not only his name on Facebook, but he actually said, "John, this is Daryl and spelled it." <laughs> so Wait, you, this is double You're barrel, right. Daryl. Yeah. Double barrel, Daryl. I like it. I think it's cool. Yeah. I like it's a cool way to spell it. I, I could be Daryl. It looks like a Daryl. 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 Yeah. yeah Isaiah, cool. this That's would cool. be twelve syllables for you. <laughs> Yeah, Isaiah, if I didn't already say Daryl, if you saw that word, how would you pronounce his name? I'd probably say Daryl. 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 Law, son. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it looks like if you just read it, it looks like some sort of medication that a doctor prescribed for you. <laughs> There's too many R's and too many A's in there. Yeah. It's like. <laughs> well, Daryl, I don't know how to follow me more. Just keep doing what you're doing. And, uh, do it, you say it. No, he said. Sorry, isn't Daryl? Is it what? It's a medicine, Daryl. Daryl. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got to get that Daryl. Yeah. Uh, are, you, are you out there seeing fake Daryls? <laughs> get you some Daryl. Right. Then you'll be like, oh, you're not real Daryl. You're one yeah. of the fake Daryls. Side effects could be bad though. <laughs> yeah. Nausea, diarrhea. Uh, mm -hmm. um, oh, so Buddy's Tavern also left our buddy. Um, one of the best. Dive bars in the in Newton. Yeah, is it Conover? Newton. Newton. Uh, he he put up the exact sign on. So he has billboards. He he owns billboards, electronic billboards. So what he did was he took a picture of what the restaurant posted on their sign and put it on his billboard. <laughs> Please let the coach and GM pick this year. I thought that was brilliant. Way to go, buddy. All right. Thank you all for uh, leaving the comments. Um, this was a fun episode, right? Yeah. Did you have a good time? I did. It's good to see you again. Yeah, hey, it's good to be back. Happy early Mother's Day to yep. you, all you crazy mothers out there. Isaiah, good job today. Um, don't you have a segment? I do. I have this day in history. Okay, this will be great. So, on this day in history, in 1843, a 14-year-old fisherman by the name of Manjiro came over to the U.S. by boat and is believed to be the first ever immigrant to come from this country. Whew. That's a lot to take in. 1843. 1843. First immigrant to, that did, that, what did he do to discover... He, he just can't, he's believed to be the first immigrant to come from this country. To come from this country. What was his name again? Manjiro, Manhiro, I guess that's M-A-N-J-I-R-O. Mm -hmm. And what is the uh, country of origin? <laughs> that's giving you that. I know. <laughs> Let me see if I can trick you. Okay. Can you use it in a sense? You want to guess? Huh. Oh, I'll give yeah. you a hint. So later on, after Manjiro got a little bit older, he became a samurai. Oh. Japan. Yeah. China. Did I get it right? Yep, you got it right. All right. All right. Yay me. All right. Um, all right. Yeah, any, uh, we're doing a dismount now. I want you guys to come see me on the road. Come watch me do my thing live. Kent will tell you it's one of the best things he's ever seen in his life. Uh, next up is Unumclaw, Washington. May the 17th at the Chalet Theater. Then May the 18th, I'll be in Chehalis, Washington at McFillers Theater. May 31 through June 1st, Chattanooga, Tennessee at the Comedy Catch. Atlanta, June 7 through 9 at the Punchline. All these tour dates, tickets, and more can be found at carolinareaper.com. Okay, Isaiah, uh, before we wrap this up, any... Uh, Final comments, questions, concerns? So to answer your question earlier about the meme, Scott Luffridge was the one that posted the meme oh. that made you look like Herman from yeah. Bad Santa. Yeah. And then the last playoff appearance that the Carolina Panthers had was in 2017, and it was a wild card. Right. Oh, who was the quarterback? Was it Baker Mayfield? Just mm. curious. Look that one up as I uh, continue with the dismount. Um, <clears throat> had a good time. Don't forget, we're not just a live Facebook and YouTube show podcast for the ear holes. Uh, we could uh, use some new reviews and some Cam Newton. 
2017 was Cam Newton. And that was it. So we've not been to the playoffs since 2017, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Seven years, dude. Seven years. See, I told you I'd use my Is fingers. that before Cam wore a dress was, or after Cam And he word. didn't have a good year that year. 22 touchdowns and 16 interceptions. What's a touchdown? Touchdown. I know that. I fumbled on that one. Dutch Dutch fumbled on that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's when I, you, you go on a double date with I people who are paying Dutch. No one pay. wants to put money down. Yeah. <laughs> it's a Dutch down. It's a Dutch down. I guess. <laughs> All right. Uh, anything oh. you want to add to this? No, good times, man. Good times. Yeah. There you it's go. It's been fun. That's Sebastian I've been back. McConaughey. Good to have you back. Seen you back in a while. Let's go to the booth, uh, guys. You anything you want me to say at the end? We're good? Nah, we're all good, man. All right, we're everybody. All, here. all right, well, uh, that's it for this week. But before you leave, remember, sharing is caring. Right now is the perfect time to hit that share button, baby. Don't want us up and throw us away into the wastebasket. Make a paper airplane out of us. Throw us on to someone else. Please and thank you. All right, that's it for this week. Bye, Circle.